All right, next we have Amanda Bauer from the University of Idaho. Picture yourself in your kitchen after a long, hard day at work. You're starved. You heat up some leftovers and decide to also make a salad. So you pull out the lettuce and consider washing it, but shrug your shoulders and think, what's the worst that could happen if I don't? We've all been there, not washing our vegetables, but what if I told you that on those leaves are little bacteria that if you ate them, could make your medicine less effective? In my research, I study a farming practice that could make this scenario a reality. This practice is the conversion of arid and semi-arid lands, known as dry lands, into agriculture fields. This is happening all over the globe. In fact, 25% of global dry lands are currently being used as farmland today, supporting local food security and economies. Indeed, this has happened in southern Idaho. In the picture on the left is what southern Idaho used to look like, very dry and barren. And the picture on the right is what southern Idaho looks like now, very moist and lush after humans have irrigated it. But just like with any other human-induced change, there can be some unintended consequences. In this scenario, by irrigating, we've completely changed the conditions in the soil for the organisms that live in the soil. These organisms include bacteria and fungi, collectively known as microbes. Even though you can't see them, these microbes are very important because they cycle the nutrients plants need to grow. Scientists know that in very lush, moist environments, there are a whole host of bacteria in the soil that are resistant to antibiotics. But in more dry, barren environments, there are less of these resistant bacteria. What we don't know is what happens when we go from one to the other, like what's happened in southern Idaho. For my thesis project, I look at this unknown, asking how does increased moisture from irrigation impact the abundance of antibiotic-resistant genes in the soil? We ask these questions because antibiotic resistance can transfer from the soil to the crop via the bacteria living on the leaf surfaces. This potentially exposes us to the antibiotic resistance when we, say, eat that unwashed salad you had for dinner. This is concerning because antibiotic resistance can make medical cures less effective when we have infections in our bodies. Thus, with this research, we hope to have a better understanding of how desert farming can impact the soil bacteria and the implications to human health. Thank you. Thank you, Amanda. I, I grew up on a dry land farming where we didn't irrigate. So I'm curious to know if you grew up in southern Idaho where all this is happening. I did not. I grew up in California <laughs> huh? where we irrigate a ton. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> and so this was a really fun project because I get to look at how irrigation, which you know I'm used to in California, can affect the soil. Right. And so are you also in the College of Ag and Life Sciences? I am. Yeah. What is your major? <laughs> I am in, my major is in soil and land resources. Great. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you. Thank, thank you. Thank you. <laughs>